Hey, this is JD. Welcome to my channel. This is an update from yesterday's video on this very nice old Waltham size 6 pocket watch. So the problem I was having on this pocket watch yesterday after I reassembled it is that it didn't look like the amplitude was very good. I was getting maybe a 190 to 180 degree swing on it, but I knew I did a lot of work on it and sometimes they just have to work themselves in. So I included uh, putting some oil on the, uh, what is this stuff here? Some of this, some of this oil here on the, there we go, 9415 Mobius on the pallet forks, the pallet fork stones and the pallet forks, the pallet fork stones. And I know that when you first put that on, it kind of dampens the uh, connection of the stones to the escapement. But then after it works itself in, it works incredibly. So also I had uh, oiled each one of the uh, jewels, or this thing doesn't have any jewels, so it's a, effectively a seven jewel watch, right? So and if you do your jewel count on a seven jewel watch, what do we have? We usually have, we usually have an upper and lower bounce jewel. That's one, two. You usually have a cap jewel on upper and lower balance that's four see i'm pretty good eh? all those years of engineering i can count to four so and then you have uh pallet stone jewels two now i got six and there's one left can you guess which one it is five four three two one it's the impulse jewel on the balance that's seven jewels. So that is a minimum for any pocket watch. Now, if you go to the old ye old England pocket watches, or if you go to the ones with a different kind of escapements, like a cylinder escapement, then you can get away with a whole lot less in jewels because you don't end up with the pallet fork jewels and you don't end up with the impulse jewel. So you basically have four jewels in those watches um, if in fact the balance is jeweled, so the upper and lower balance. But so the good news, the good news, I woke up this morning to check out how this thing was running. And from a 90 to 180 degree swing, I now have a 360 degree swing on the balance, right? And that's with the existing mainspring. I did some mainspring hunting. I found some comparable replacement mainsprings that I might have used but I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a waste of mainspring because the mainspring that was in there was a bit set, but not that bad. So, and I said it was set before, but I've seen a lot worse. Um, and what is a set mainspring? Do I have a mainspring just hanging around here? I don't know if I have a mainspring. I don't think I did. That's where the coils are really wrapped in tight and, and then there's just nothing left, right? So, but this is a fairly small barrel. So if you're looking at the coils being about this big when you pull it out, which is around the size of the coils, probably about eight inches, seven, eight inches pulled out. And then you're, you're, you're rat rolling that all into a barrel this size, you're still going to have a lot of power left. So it's not going to be a incredibly set mainspring. If you've got a size 18 watch with an 18 millimeter barrel uh, diameter um, and you're, and you're taking a coil this big into an 18 millimeter diameter you're not going to be able to generate as much power but those springs are a lot uh, they're a lot better and or thicker anyway so and you're, you're really looking at the width of the mainspring is its strength and that's how wide it is from the flatness of the wideness and then when you when you're looking at the mainspring and its barrel let me just d describe it to you here for a second i'll put it down here so if you're looking at a mainspring and you're saying okay this, this, right, that, 1.9 to 2, 1.9 millimeters, move that over. That, that, right, represents the width of the mainspring sitting in the barrel, so it's got to be the right size. That barrel was 2.06 millimeters, according to my American Watchmakers catalog, right? And then the strength of that spring, and I can't do it, really do it on this mainspring, I'd have to take it out. But the strength, you're measuring right in here, you're measuring the width of that mainspring, like that, right? So that, not width, what's that? That's 
uh, widths and lengths and uh, anyway, that's how strong it is. So this says 0.2, upside down, so it's 0.1. The harder I push with my thumb, the lower the number gets. So, and the strength that was required for this particular watch was 0.15. That's what I looked up. It had three readings depending on the size of the barrel. So it was 0.1415 and 1.6, right? So three different readings. But the amplitude on this little puppy dog is excellent right now. So probably no reason to uh, to actually fix the amplitude but what i'm going to do in this video here is i'm going to recase it right now and uh and that's it and so you don't have to listen to me talking anymore so it was magnetized as you saw i, I showed that in the past the previous video how to demagnetize it worked perfectly after that so that's good because it, it if you've got a, ma a watch and the mainsprings magnetize it'll cause these little coils to bunch up underneath the uh underneath the balance and the other thing you gotta look for is that if you can f I got my stereo microscope which is really good but if you can look underneath that balance sometimes you'll see two parts of that hairspring I just I said mainspring I meant hairspring two parts of that hairspring actually touching like bunched up underneath the balance like hidden by the balance cock so you gotta look under there too because they, they can be bunched up for various reasons they can be bunched up because there's oil on the spring causing it to stick together right on the hairspring um, it can be bent a bit so it's not perfectly uh, uniform as it spirals uh, spirals to center um, and that could, being not uniform could cause it to do that then you have to take the main the hairspring off and then reshape it so that it's centered with the top of the balance cock, cock upper jewel so you've got the, the main spring actually the stud is centered so you can adjust that so the studs moved over and centered um, there's all kinds of reasons if the um, if the regulator pins that where the mainspring rides through the regulator pins if those regulator pins are bent uh, out of position or something they could cause the mainspring to go outward more in the spiral if they go outward more in the spiral you then they're going to be inward on the other side um, probably 180 degrees to where it's pushing outward more so so all those sorts of things. So you need the the spiral to be, to to be. Uh, what's, what, what word did I use a few seconds ago? Uh, it needs to be the spacing between, the equal spacing as it spirals around between the, the hairspring, the elements of the hairspring as it spirals around. So consistent. That's not a right name, a right term rather. Equal. Uh, I'll think of a word. Again, I'm an engineer, not an art, artsy fartsy. So. So, so the good news then is this particular movement um, is doing really well. Uh, its amplitude is, is, I've got a 360 degree swing on it. So it's, that's as much as I expect to get out of this particular watch. I do have to time it uh, again, but I'm going to wait till I case it first. And then I'm going to time it. Sometimes when you case it, you can cause pressure on the plates here. And casing it and pressure on these plates... Uh, might cause pressure on the pivots, uh, but this is screwed in nicely now. There should be no issue there at all. Um, I did take that mainspring out again. I, uh, I basically I took the centered area here on the mainspring here, and I made it a little smaller so it gripped the arbor better. Um, and on this particular watch, the top part you see has the arbor attached already. And then you have a, 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 I'll say a stick arbor that goes all the way through with a square end that goes through a gear on the very bottom. And that's that gear in the very bottom is used to, it connects to the, the other gear that I showed you yesterday on the top or the other video. And that's used to actually wind the watch. So it winds it from the bottom um, through that arbor. So it's an interesting, uh, interesting way of doing it. So let me just... Uh, get on with casing it. I do have a cover that I've put over the movement all night so it wouldn't get dusty. So there's nothing worse than having a dusty movement. That sounds like a country and western guy's name. Eh? My name is Dusty Movement. Oh yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> Clint Eastwood. This is the most powerful handgun ever made. 44 Magnum. Blow your, blow your head clean off. Do you feel lucky, punk? All right, that was really bad. Anyway, that's it. Uh, let's get to the casing. All right, here's a picture of a mainspring. 
<clears throat> and this one here was from another watch. I think it was from another watch. And this was the, the barrel spring and spring width and strength of 0.15, 2.18. So that's the width would have been too much for this other watch. And the barrel was 15 millimeters, which is also too much for this particular watch. This was for a size 12 Waltham. I believe it was for the other Waltham I had repaired recently for Wally. There's the Wally Waltham. And wound that last night, still running. Uh, it's doing a great job. Keeping good time too, which is nice. So I got to get a glove on before I get in trouble. All right, let's see if I can do this without screwing up. So these are the parts I need to case. Just got back from McDonald's for coffee because everything else is closed today. So I went for the MACD coffee, which is not normally where I coffee. So I just put on my glasses. And for you folks that haven't seen these before, this is the Airy loop. Costs you about 120 bucks for that loop. It's not cheap. It flips down like that and it grabs onto your glasses. And again, for my glasses, I've got the, the, uh, the bottom part is times three, which allows me to do pocket watch work. And the top part is is point one throw two I think which is good for looking at the computer screen so it's perfect uh, for both work and pocket watch work although I have glasses I use for work or these glasses so, so anyway that's just a those are called an airy a r y loop and for you for those who haven't seen it there's the package for the airy loop Swiss made a r y don't get standard get maxi. I could make a joke there, but I'm not going to do it. And then you've got right and left. So gauche, droite, gauche, droite. So that one there is gauche, which I believe is left, and droite is right. So I use my left eye because I'm left-handed. There it is there, and there's the packaging for the area loop standard. This one's standard. So I have another loop, another area loop. The one I just showed you is the large. Okay, so you want large. So let me just get this, move this out of the way because keep everything out of the way unless you're using it because you will break it. So there we go. That's the hour wheel and there's the minute wheel. And when you grab this stuff, you grab it very carefully. These are the screws for the case. So when I case it, I'll use those screws like that. These are the hands. So I'm going to case it first and then I'm going to put the hands on. So I've got some steady steadiness in there right so so i'm going to end up casing it and then rehanding it so there's the uh the top part and i will blow this thing out to make sure there's no dust on it and i will also blow this out to make sure there's no dust on it i may just drop this onto the mat because there you go sometimes it's better just to drop it on the mat than to actually pick it up and scratch stuff because it's falling on its own force, right, when you're dropping it on the mat. And here, um, I've, I've already done this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to case it first. And then before I put the hands on, I'm going to use Rodico to take off any dust or anything that would be on that, right? So there's the case there. Um, the case is in fairly good shape. And <clears throat> I've cleaned that case, but I'm going to Rodico it again, right? And that just gets any additional stuff off the case but let's leave it looking vintage that's what i've heard from my friends online is that you know don't fart with it to make it look brand new because the watch just doesn't retain as much value when when you make it look new because i've got this chemical called peak and this chemical called peak will definitely shine this thing up so it's new but it also removes gold so if you want to remove gold from your watch then you can use peak and you'll remove gold rodico though as you can see when you swipe it with the rodico it just gets rid of everything right so all the dirt and dust and everything else right so it's pretty good it's like hand ultrasonic cleaning so so i use rodico and then the owner of course can grab that watch again and use whatever the owner wants to use to clean that up again but this this does a great job and then clean it up that way and then grab a, a nice watchmaker's cloth like that and then finish it up and you got to do this without putting any stress on the hinges so the hinges 
sounds like the Hindenburg. So there we go. That's good. And this side here, just clean that up a bit like this. And as I said earlier, I'm looking at the, uh, the case here and the watchmakers would have made some marks on it. The guys that actually did some work on the case, on the watch. And I can see one, two, maybe, th no, two. I think I can see oh, one, one, one there, two there. I think, is that a second one? No, it's just a mark. So one, two, it's only been cleaned twice in its life. And this thing is from, oh, three. There's another one right on the lid. Can you see that right there? If I just shadow that a bit. There you go. You see that mark right there? It's right there on the lid. So that's the dust cover. So it's pretty impressive. It has not really been worked on that much. So, so I'm going to case this thing now. Before I case it, I've got to put this crystal crystal no face no what is this thing called <laughs> i'm gonna put it back on i'm gonna put it back on now when i hold, handle this movement i'm staying away staying far away from the uh staying far away from the escapement and the balance so the first thing i want to do is and I can put this on the ground right but I'm gonna have to pick it up anyway again so so what I'm gonna do is put the wheel in here this is the minute wheel and you really don't need to put uh, any oil on that minute wheel and I'm gonna put the uh, hour wheel on top and I'm just making sure that it meshes with that wheel which it does now I'm looking really carefully to see where that pivot is because this is a, this is, yeah, it should be right there. So let me just look really closely. And there it is. So you can see that pivot. I'm going to go really close here and see if this works. There we go. And the pivot, you can see, is right there. So that there is the second hand. So... When I put this watch together, again, I'm keeping an eye on that movement here. Of course, I tipped it the other way and everything falls out. Way to go. Again, this is what happens when you do videos while you're watchmaking. What do they say? Never do videos while you're watchmaking. So i got to take this all out again because I need to put the minute hand in first. Now the bad news is I've had two coffees this morning, so, but my hands are still fairly steady. It's not recommended to drink a lot of coffee before you do anything on watch work. So, so there's that pivot right here, right there. So first thing to do is to get my screwdrivers out and make sure that the little teeny weeny screws that will grab grab this are still loose yeah they look I was a bad boy I didn't tighten any of them so that's good I'm gonna grab this with my fingies and I'm gonna place this down onto the watch where's that where's that escapement it's over on the other side so just keep my hands away from that escapement so so I just want to put that down I probably could do this better if I wasn't looking at it from the top. There we go. That went in nicely. Keep my fingies away from that and then just take my screwdriver here and tighten that. Now, I was going to clip my fingernails again, but I'm learning Breezing by George Benson on guitar. And that is one friggin' hard song to learn. That's uh, it's one giant lead break, and it ain't easy. I'm telling you. 
Now, if I sing for you right now, you guys are going to just unsubscribe to my channel, right? But breezing <coughs> goes. Dum do 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 Doop, doop, doo doo. Let me see if this pulls out. There we go. <clears throat> so you got to pull that out. Now I'm going to put the movement in from the back up and put in these screws. So I need a different screwdriver for these screws. It's got to be a bigger one. So I'm going to use the gray one. Oh, yeah, the gray one. Let me look at what I've got. Again, trying to keep my fingers away. This is a banker's watch, by the way. It's a size six. And it's called a banker's movement because I guess these bank dudes would go and they would just get that in the right position here. Like, where is that? Like this here. Yeah, the bank dudes would wear this. So it's a small watch. Um, keep my fingers away from the, from the second hand pivot. So we just, all you do is you push that in like that. And you may have to rotate, if you can look ahead of time and see how square this thing is, right? You can rotate the uh, stem so it matches up nicely. Like that, until it finds home. And once I've done that, I, what I typically do is I tip it like that. So, but right now I'm having a fun time. So I'm just... Trying to do this on camera. Don't do stuff like this on camera. Never works. All right, there we go. That's not bad, but I've got to tip it now so that it finds the stem and then goes in. And I'm moving the stem around just so it finds the stem. So there we go. I think it found the stem. I'll flip that around the other way like this and see where it's sitting and it's sitting in the right position so again keep my fingers away from the escapement these are a little bit of a pain in the butt because they've got all these lids so I did wash these screws which is nice so let me see if I can just put one of them in here Get that set in before things move. And these have washers on them, which is nice because it's holding the. Uh, these are half half screw heads, like there's an edge taken off the, the screw head, which is which supposedly um, helps you remove the movement without removing the screw, which is a waste of time because if you're going to do watch work you're going to end up removing that screw anyway. So so somebody put, some watchmaker probably put these little washers in because it wouldn't come like that from the factory. So when I screw this in, I'm tipping the movement downward. So if my screwdriver slips, it stays away from the, the uh, balance staff or the balance. All right, so that's good like that. Now I can hold the movement here and give it a little bit more of a tightening. So just grab it like that. My fingernails are longer now, so. All right, tighten that one up and then I'm gonna be true to form here and actually turn this sideways and tighten it this way here again so that the screwdriver, if it slips, doesn't mar the movement. mar the movement all right so there we go and push that in like that and test the winding and the winding is 
working the balance is still ticking away nicely which is nice and you don't need to wind this to its very end when you're winding it so if Wally's watching he's an expert in watch repair I believe this thumbnail needs to be done too but I like to get that underneath the lid to pop it up so this is working very well as you can see it's ticking really nicely now I still have to time it because it's right at the fastest of the fast which you know maybe that's where it belongs but uh, it is running very nicely right now so I don't want to fart with it too much and now I can flip it over and deal with the hands but before I do the hands the hands I'm just going to use a rotico and I'm going to make a point with the rotico and that way when you're putting pressure on the face it bends so there's no unnecessary pressure on the face of this watch. Let me get in closer. I should just stop the recording and start again, but the heck with it. I'm going to force you guys to watch stuff. So I just do this and take off, take off hoser. I'm taking off any dust that might have landed on this thing. Plus it takes off any extraneous dirt. Is that a word? Extraneous? Because that's a big word for me. Extra dirt. And of course, Wally, who owns this, can do the same thing when he receives the watch back, right? And what I want to do, one more thing before I close this puppy dog down, is I want to put just a little dab of oil on that hinge just a little bit and I'm going to use the yellow oil that should find its way in there somehow it's like rust checking your car <laughs> I'm just going to put this on the side here And then the top. So there we go. It's a little bit of yellow oil, I'll call it. Right? I do need to get myself some more uh, sticks of whatever that stuff is called to uh, clean that off. So that's good there. And now, so what I do now, this is my new technique, is I want to make sure that this watch, when you set it, that the the minute hand doesn't interfere with let me see if I can get a good the minute hand doesn't interfere with the uh, the hour hand or the seconds hand sorry the seconds hand when it comes around and it's riding down here does not interfere with the minute hand coming around so the first thing I do is I put the seconds hand on and it's pretty easy to put this on you just have to be very very careful so you take the second hand like this and you lean it like that and then you push it forward and let the, the hole let the hole find a pivot and there you can see that it's now running then I take the back of my tweezers And I push it down. Now look at how far down it is. And it's, we can go a little tiny bit more. But not a lot. That's good there. So don't you don't put too much pressure on it when you're pushing it down, because it's actually pushing on the pivot of the fourth wheel. And if you do that, you can screw it up. So you don't want to do that. So now I can put the hour hand on. It doesn't matter what alignment I have on the hour hand because I'll be able to um, just I saw a little flake of something on the end here. So I want to push this on. And then, like I said, it doesn't matter the alignment on it because I can just change the time and that hour hand will move. So I don't need it to be at 12 o'clock right now to align it. But I do need it to be close. So I just need it to be on well. And I push that down. 
and I look at the clearance. So just look at it sideways and then you can see the clearance, right? And I want to make sure there's not too much clearance. Like it doesn't, the top of this hour hand doesn't go up too much. And to do that, I can just take this pusher and move it sideways a bit and that'll put the hour hand down more. That should be good there. And now what I want to do, if this doesn't work, I have to adjust it again. So I want to ride that hour hand over the top of this second sand and see where it, how close it is. That's pretty freaking close. I may have to push the second sand down a little more because that is really close. And I don't know whether that'll cause me any issues later on. close but it's going around so I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait a minute just so I can see again how close this is because if I could push that seconds hand down just a bit more life would be good but again I don't want to push it I don't want to stress it too much because it will that will cause me bigger problems um, with the pivot of that right Alright, I was able to push it down a bit more. There we go, and I flattened it out a bit too. Playing with the second hand. Now it looks like there's good clearance there now. And I just have to make sure as the second hand goes around, it is not touching the uh, face of the watch as it's going around because that would stop it. So that's all very detailed stuff. And I just put the hour hand right over the top and if you can look at that sideways, there you go, that's a good shot. That's not a bad shot there. You can almost see, can you see that? It's clearing it nicely. It's trying to focus and it's focusing on the knobby. So if I go down this way a little more Am I going to get the focus? Sorta. There you go. You can see it's clearing it without a problem, right? Now I could shape that hour hand a bit, but it's not too bad. And it's clearing, which is nice. So now I can move that around. And that is actually moving very smoothly, which is which I like, right? And now when I set this, I'll set it just before it hits the mark, because it'll take me a few seconds to get this minute hand in position, right? And I don't want to screw it up. I'll be able to tap it around. I used to do all kinds of different things putting the minute hand back on, but if I just do this and rest that on top for a second. And now what I do, what I do is I gotta make sure the minute hand doesn't touch the hour hand, so I just tap that over a little bit, like that. And I have to rock it back, because, and then move it. That's good there. Now I'm going to push it on more. So you got to hold it sideways as you push it down and then look at where it's ending up. This is actually, I think, too small a hand setter. So I'll use this one here and push that down while I'm looking at it. That's pretty good there if it clears the crystal.
then I don't have a problem. There we go. That's pretty darn good. This might be off just a tad, but it's not bad for a very vintage pocket watch. So that's not too bad. It's funny, some, some of them are more aligned than the others. So that's it there. So that's good. Now the question is, will it clear the crystal? So can I push it down more? Because I think I can push it down, push it forward more. And you got to make sure it's not rocking too much, right, from side to side. So let me get the back end of this thing here, this jobby do thing. I'm a jobby do hickey, and I think I can push this forward somewhere. There, that's forward more, and then I look at the spacing again, and I got plenty of spacing. I got no spacing issues at all. So let me just move this around, and I just look at all the three hands here in the second hand, look at it sideways, and as you can see, it's looking pretty friggin' good. See that spacing there? That is what you're looking for, for a spacing, right? And then when you put the, um, when I snap this, the crystal back on here, um, I want to make sure that there's no, no gaps. Or I don't want to make sure that that minute hand doesn't touch the top. So let me just take my cloth here and wipe the inside lightly. I don't want to pop this off right now because that would piss me off. So just wipe that lightly like that and then wipe the top because I'll be able to wipe the top later. I want to keep fingerprints away from it though. I'm not sure if there's any on the other side, so let me look. You can't really see them if you saw any. They're not visible once you've put the lid on. So let me just go like this. And I'm going to have to use my fingies anyway to push down on both sides, so I could get another glove. I actually don't need it. I just need to. I just need to push down on both sides to get this thing in. Um, and I don't want to make the noise with the lid on the other side, so I just grab this like so. And then align this like that to the top. And then push it down. It may or may not be on. It's not on. <laughs> there we go. It's on now. <clears throat> and that that crystal is now on. Now the question is, is it clearing the crystal on the inside? And the answer is yes. So there we go. So that's clearing the crystal nicely. Um, I'm going to bring this up to, right now it's 1028. So 10... 27, 10, 28, and change. So 10, 28, my other watch says 10, 29. 10, 29. So there we go. That's done. And then make sure this hooks nicely. So I do this, press down. It's hooking. Press back up again. It's unhooking. There we go. It's a little that this hook is a little testy. I don't know if I can do any work to fix that. Because it was hooking nicely, so it's got a little edge on it there that you want to hook on the edge, on this edge here. Right? And hook now. I'm not sure if there's any adjustment I need to make on that because it's really it's really testy as they say. I might be able to bring it up a bit with my screwdriver here. If I just put the screwdriver in here like this and then twist that just a bit. 
Will that work? Will that bring it up a bit? All right, it closes now. But okay, that's nice. That's nice and closed. And now, see, watch me put my fingernail in there. Look at that, eh? You guys are wishing you had fingernails like this. See, and it's running nicely, no problems. Let me move that over here a little bit. There we go. So that's done and dusted. Done and dusted. Now I'm gonna put this in the watch timer and see what kind of crap I get from that. So my, my witchy 1900 says it's running super fast. So what you don't want it running is this fast, right? So the question is, while it's in here, can I slow this thing down a bit, right? And I should be able to, what I'm going to do is take it out of here and turn it around because I want to be able to face it while I'm doing this and pull that back and it'll reestablish its speed in a second. There we go, still running super fast. But the amplitude is, let's see if we can see that, the amplitude is 239. That is really good. 239. I'm sorry I uh, can't show this to you because normally I don't bother showing people what's going on here. So I should be able to just move that back a bit. So there we go. It's got a little 0 0.6 speed error, which is not terrible. So I just pushed it back and the amplitude is improving a bit, or sorry, the rate's improving a bit. It's plus 228 seconds per day. Whoa, Jerry, that's pretty fast. So, and that's what that, when that arm was set back, way back when. So now I'm plus 198. Let's try to get this down to something reasonable. Hopefully I can, now it's plus 87. You can see the lines here and saying plus 87 right here. Sorry for the sorry for the inconvenience of the camera. I'm not sure if I can get my camera closer. Um, I'd have to take it off its stand to get it closer for this particular camera or grab a different one, right? So, but I'm not going to do that. So it's plus 75 right now. Amplitude's 250. So that is friggin' excellent. The bead air is a little high, but this is a very old watch and I'm not going to fret with the bead air. So let me just move that back a bit more. And I will restart this. And see what I get. Stand by! Do a watch check. So I've got a Seiko 5. This is a gorgeous watch. Somebody said that this is one of the best looking Seikos that are out there. So it's a Seiko 5, can't remember the brand name, and my other watch. So now it's running minus 17 seconds per day, but it's got a bigger bead error for some reason. And the other watch is the Folex. <laughs> this is an Apple Watch Folex. This is thinned out, and it doesn't ride nicely on that. So i got to pound this out to pound the leather to both sides, because it was a, a uh, 24. This one's a lot closer and it just needs pounding so it just takes the leather and squishes it because i had pounded it the other way to fit into another watch so there you go so now it's running at minus one second per day um it's got a crazy beat error in there 3.7 but man that amplitude is amazing 244 degrees there wally on the amplitude it doesn't get better than that so hopefully you're appreciating the amplitude I'm going to just show you because it's so freaking good. i got to move this amplitude over towards you. It's a little scattery on the beat, but that's what you're looking at. And the amplitude is at 252. The beat error is fairly high, but this is not a very expensive watch. And it was minus 15 seconds per day, but it's going to flip. It says now it's plus 27, but it was minus 15 a few seconds ago. So... And the beat error was a lot better before. So it's plus 47. It's going to be moving around. I am want it to say. It's an old watch. And I've got the uh, 
52 degrees, so it's plus 20 right now. So now if I fire it with this again, who knows what it's going to do. I just love the amplitude on this thing. So plus 32 seconds a day. Can you put up with that? I'll push this over just a bit more, right? There, plus 16. Now I think that's going to ride. This will be lower in a few seconds because I moved it over. But it's 244 degrees plus 18. Doesn't get much better than that, folks. That's fairly friggin' good. And I'm looking at the beating, and it's pretty good. Now it's minus four seconds a day, so I don't know. Now that's just in one position, but this watch here is from 18, or actually 1904, I think, for this watch. I looked it up yesterday. I should just look at my numbers, right? But there's zero seconds per day, folks. Zero seconds per day. It's registered, and 242 doesn't get better than that, so let me just end this video all right i'm back this is the end of the video I'm gonna adjust myself here so do you think michael jackson was a watchmaker very possible michael jackson was a watchmaker because he used to wear that glove i think it's a white glove though so anyway i think he was a watchmaker so a few lessons here i've learned on this one so first of all first of all as you just saw sorry for all the mess in my watchmaking studio here but uh that's what happens um, so the lesson here is last yesterday when I replaced the or I reassembled this old size six seaside movement. So it's called a seaside movement. Um, 1980, I think, is the number of the movement. It's a 1980. I was going to replace the mainspring on this because I thought it was going to it was causing the watch to be like 90 degree amplitude or something. It was like really shitty. So. I thought, well, you know what? I did a lot of work on it. Let it run itself in overnight. It's a machine, right? So it needs to actually run itself in. So I let it run itself in. I got up in the morning and the damn thing was running at 360 degree amplitude. Then I, as you saw in the video, I've reassembled it. I wound it up a bit. I did all that kind of stuff. Put it on the testing machine and I did a video too. And I sent it to Wally. And the thing is running at like 410, 420 degree uh, swing. I'll call it a swing. And the amplitude from my Witchy Witchy 1900, which is a very good one. Um, I bought that off AliExpress, by the way, because everybody else has the Witchy 1000. I bought the extra good one. It shows a high beat error, but if I start farting with that beat error, I could ruin other things. I, I'm looking at the watch right now, and it makes like... Look into the camera, Stuart. I am. So, <laughs> so, but you can you can do that and adjust it. So if this was like a thousand dollar movement or five hundred dollar movement, I would have done that. I would have taken it apart. I would have just adjusted that so it's all lined up. But this is not. This is like a hundred and twenty dollar watch all up, and the movement is seven joules. So it costs you more in time. And there's a potential of screwing it up but so even with the high beat air this thing will run well so i i timed it now the uh, timing arm is pretty much in the center between fast and slow which is where you want it to be and i had it actually at zero so not plus 10 or minus five or whatever it's at zero which is pretty damn good for an old watch but the amplitude went way up way up meaning that mainspring was actually really good in providing enough power um, the lubrication on the barrel needed to catch in like that sort of thing and then the lubrication on the pivots on both sides needed to work themselves in um, and you saw the way i replaced i put the hands in it's kind of i've come up with that technique over the uh ah, not michael jackson i come up with that technique over the years um and it just kind of ensures that <clears throat> that you're when you put that second hand you press it down and have a look at it and you're looking at the gap between uh, the second hand and for some reason I can't remember what these damn things are called the dial at the dial so the second hand and the dial this is an old dial I got a bunch of them here you grab one that's this one's pretty cruddy oh my god all right this one's pretty decent there 
that's an old Waltham dial, sunken dial, Waltham. Um, and I, this is from an old watch. I was practicing doing dial feed on this thing. So it's got a lot of soldering going on there, Jerry. So anyway, the, um, when I, when I set the, the hand in, I got, I use a traditional hand pressers. I got way better hand pressers and everything else, but doing it by hand is the best way of doing it. So I push that in. I, I, as I showed you before, I nudge that seconds hand over, make sure that the, that the, um, the pivot of the second hand uh, meets up with the, oh, thinking of the name, the tube anyway, I'll call it a tube for now, of the second hand, and then you just sort of ride it over slowly, and then it falls on top of the, on top of that, the pivot, and then you press it down, and then you look at it. If you press it too hard, you can, <clears throat> you can bend that or break the pivot off the end of that second hand, so you don't want to press it too hard, because you could screw yourself by doing that. So you press it in, then the next thing I do is put the hour hand on. It doesn't matter how I put the hour hand on because I can wind that around. And I want to do, like I said, you wind it close to the second hand and see what spacing you have. So you look at it sideways, straight down like that, and just make sure the spacing is right. If, it's, if, it's, uh, if you've got room to push the second hand down, it looks like it's riding up too high, then push it down. Make sure that second hand, both the front part of it and the back part of it, um, when you're putting it back on, there's the second hand there. Make sure that that second hand on the back is not touching the sunken dial, like the inner dial. And make sure that the actual second hand in the front isn't touching the dial as well. So once you've got in, that in place and you ride this hour hand around, the hour hand, if it's too low, will catch the second hand on the tip and stop the watch. So I've had that happen a few times. And you're like, damn, why is the watch stopped? You look at it and you go, there's a reason it's touching. So it doesn't like that. <coughs> and it doesn't take much to stop the watch. So so I did that. I showed you exactly how I do it. And then once you've got that in, you can just put this, put the hour hand just before 12 o'clock. Because it's going to take you a few, few minutes or so to put this on. So I put it just before 12, ride it on, adjust it, and then press it down. And then rock it back and forth so that the minute hand is not touching the hour hand. But in this case, with these particular watches, there's not a lot of clearance here. So you got to actually have it pretty, the, the gap or the space between the, the minute hand and the hour hand is pretty narrow. It's very narrow. Not narrow. Oh, playing the fiddle or violin, whatever he did while Rome was burning. Um, it's pretty narrow and, and you got to keep it that way because you don't want the minute hand then touching the crystal on the top because it'll drag and then you, and then it won't work. So it's working well now. You can twist it around. Sometimes you can see it dragging if it drags. But my spacing here was very good. So it was impeccable spacing. So this watch, the big lesson here was let it run overnight. Like put the damn movement together. Got to stop saying the word damn. Put the movement together and let it run overnight because it's likely going to work itself in hand pressers. Hand pressers. It'll work itself in. Um, and then as I saw today and I showed you, the amplitude went way up, like I'm talking way up. So that is a really good amplitude. And as I said earlier, the bead error wasn't great, but farting with a bead error on a chip on a cheap watch, this I think this watch means a lot to Wally and his family. So they're not going to walk around with it, but if they do, it will work, no problem. Um, <clears throat> but checking, but working on that amplitude, or sorry, the bead error, you could screw something else up. There's always a possibility of of screwing stuff up. You've got to strip that balance down completely to actually um, take off the hairspring, in fact, and then you've got to do things. So you either move the roller table or the other way of doing the bead air is you get, you basically move the hairspring collet and you rotate that. That's actually the right way of doing it as opposed to farting with the roller table. <clears throat> I think I said roller table earlier, but I would take the I would be moving the hairspring in the opposite direction of where that where the impulse jewel is between the banking pins. So if the impulse jewel is sitting on this side at rest, then you have to rotate it the opposite way so that it's in the middle. So you want that in the middle for a perfect bead error. And the bead error just means when the impulse jewel sitting like that is pushed by the pallet fork. It swings around like this in a circle, swings around like this in a circle. And then it goes back, and then this right here, it stops. Then it goes back, 
catches, swings around again, stops. So the amount it swings both ways is exactly equal. And that's a that's a perfect bead error. And of course, with, uh, with any watch, because of the hairspring being spun in a certain direction, when it compresses and it decompresses, it does it with different strength, right? So you can imagine it decompressing being easier to spin around than compressing, which is harder. So there is a slight, slight difference in strength that that thing spins around. And there's, I got books on that. So, but when you're adjusting a pocket watch, it doesn't, it's a matter of a second, you know, a second or two seconds a day. So I've worked on pretty high end pocket watches. Um, as you've seen in some of my videos and those watches there, I would, I would take the time to make sure that the, there's an alignment between the balance, the pallet fork, balance at rest, pallet fork, and the center pivot of the escapement, right? And you just sit it on top and align it that way, move the hairspring around, make sure it's aligned, then put it back in. I usually mark it because you have to make sure the stud is on the balance cock when you're doing it. But I, I think I have another video on there. Just look up JD Richard. I am actually Richard, like uh, the rocket Richard. But just look up JD Richard and bead error, and I've got a video on how to adjust bead error. So you go ahead and do it. I'll stop talking now. So thanks for watching my video. This is a very good lesson, I think. So let it run itself in. It's a machine. It's a small machine, but it's still a machine. So let it work itself in. And then once it's work, it, it's done and gone overnight, if it's still a shitty amplitude, that does mean you have to replace that, that uh, the uh, mainspring. So replace the mainspring if you have a shitty amplitude still. If you don't have a shitty amplitude and it increases incredibly, like this one did, incredibly, then leave it because it's a good mainspring. So there's no need replacing it if it works perfectly. What do, they, what do they say if it ain't fixed? If it ain't broken, don't fix it. So anyway, thanks for watching my video. I'm going to shut up now. So if you want me to do any watch work for you, let me see if I can point at my thing here. There we go. Just uh, contact jdwatchservice at gmail.com, jdwatchservice at gmail.com. I will not respond to you in any other way. So if you're a Canadian, like I am, a, a, roof, a, a boot, not about. I say about, Americans go about, a boot. I don't say a boot, I say a boat. But that sounds like a boot for some people, I think. Anyway, I'm Canadian, O Canada. Arrived here in 1661. It was a cold and miserable day. Anyway, thanks for watching my video. Uh, get a hold of me if you want me to do any work. Things should uh, lighten up a little bit at work in the next couple months. And I still shout out to Bill. I still have to work on your watch. I'm still waiting for the mainspring for a 7750 and I got a mainspring, a new mainspring on that one because I think it's an old watch and I want to get it working well and I think it warrants a new mainspring. In that particular 7750, it's a, a high complexity watch, right? So a lot of complications as they say, because it's a chronograph. That watch, um, if I put it all together and the mainspring is not st strong enough, I got to take it all apart again because you cannot just slide in the new mainspring barrel and hopefully it works. They weren't that bright. So, and what those watches there, when they're service, they usually replace the mainspring. So I'm waiting for the mainspring bill still from CousinsUK.com. It likely will come in. It's likely slowed down by Brexit. No, it's slowed down by the postal service or something. But once I get that, I'll be reassembling that 7750 chronograph. Um, shout out to <clears throat> two things shout out to uh, the best boat captain on the on the water so captain matt who's a uh, who a four hour course on driving around my pontoon boat and <clears throat> and cousins uk they do such a great job with with watch parts and stuff like that and if you're in, in the u.s you can go to esslinger uh, which has got a lot of stuff or or Kais, kasker kasker c-a-s-k-e-r um, they've got good watch parts too. In Canada, it's Perrin, but you've got to call them up and tell them specifically what you want because most of your stuff is not on their website. So Perrin, P-E-R-R-I-N, I think, if you want. And if you're a magician, go to Browser's Den of Magic to go get your information on how to do magic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And never mind, I won't bother doing Randy Rocket, the Randy Savage. 
right? Cream of the crop. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'm entertaining you tonight if you're watching it at night. If you're watching it at day and your wife's around, you're going to have to turn it off.